One of the first careers I ever aspired to was astronomy. Before that, I used to actually want to become a priest, believe it or not. I had become a bit of a born-again Christian at the age of 12. Until I started reading about science and the Big Bang Theory, and it was magical and inspiring and incredibly thought-provoking. I started to develop a curiosity and love for nature and space. I thought that cosmology was the most profound thing that a person could study, the study of the origin and the fate of the universe. But then I took high school physics. I did okay, but it frustrated me that our equations were not precise. We had to account for margins of error, significant digits, and all the real-world factors that would make your answers way more complicated than what was on the paper. It started getting a little too tedious for me. As for my English class, I actually enjoyed writing essays and stories and reading Shakespeare. I think I'm part of the small group of math majors that liked English. But what I didn't like was that it was so subjective. Two teachers could read the same exact essay and give it two completely different grades. Math, on the other hand, is for the most part, and at least in high school, black and white. A statement is true or false, an object is in a set or it's not in a set, and an answer is either right or wrong no matter who grades it, which I found very satisfying. Math is extremely rigorous, austere, and pure. Let me give you an example by comparing a scientific theory with a mathematical theorem. In science, a theory is a body of ideas and explanations about a real-world phenomenon, and it can be tweaked and added to and subtracted from as we get new information through experiments or observation. Charles Darwin, for instance, theorized that random mutations in genes from one generation to the next mixed with natural selection and a fight for survival could produce the diversity of all life on Earth. All life, from me to you, to Abraham Lincoln, to your dog, the potted plant in your living room, and a T-Rex that lived millions of years ago. We are all related via a tree of life and connected by a common ancestor. Embryology, fossils, and DNA were all independent lines of evidence that fortified the theory and made it stronger. But he did get some details wrong though. For instance, at the time, we thought that the age of the Earth was much younger than it actually is, and that did pose some problems at the time. But now we know that the Earth is much older than we thought it once was, more than enough time for his theories to have played out. Compare this with a theorem in math. For a scientist to believe something, they have to test it over and over again, and probably get people in different parts of the country to test it over and over. And if you continuously get more or less the same answer every single time, then you can start to say that there might be a pattern. But for a mathematician to believe a theorem, they only need to prove it once. And once is enough, because once it's true, it's true forever, and it never needs fortifying, it never needs confirming. Let's take, for example, one of the most famous theorems you've surely heard of, the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem says that the square of the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle is equal in area to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Okay, so first of all, we have to have a right angle triangle, which is just a triangle with a 90 degree angle marked by that little square. We usually label the sides A, B, and C, but they're all just variables. It just means that it doesn't matter what the dimensions of the triangle are. This will be true for any right angled triangle. So this hypotenuse is always the side that's opposite the right angle. It's the longest side, and people usually label it C. This theorem says that the square of the hypotenuse, which would be C squared, equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides, which would be A squared plus B squared. We can view this geometrically by making a square on each side of the triangle. And the area of a square is just the side length squared, so the theorem says that the area in red is the same size as the area in blue. Now let's prove it. Make a square where the side lengths are a plus b, so this length here is a, this length here is b, and then let's put four of our triangles inside of it, which are our right angle triangles with the length a, b, and c, so you'll see there's a smaller square in the middle. The side lengths of that smaller inner square are all c, so the area of that inner square in red is c squared. Now for the sake of the demonstration, I'll color in the four triangles different colors, but they are all the same dimension, which is called congruence. Now let's imagine I shift the green triangle to the top left corner beside the orange one, and the blue and purple triangles I shift down to the bottom right corner. I'm still inside the larger square, but the negative space left over is now these two smaller squares with side lengths a and b, so the area in red here is a squared plus b squared. But the only difference is I've moved the location of the four triangles, so the area in red should stay the same. Thus, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 
This proof is thousands of years old and still it remains just as true as ever. Can you think of anything else that humans thought was true thousands of years ago which we still think is true today? Anything written on a cuneiform tablet or papyrus scroll that can give us any educational value outside of its historical value? I mean, we were wrong about the solar system, we thought that everything revolved around the Earth. We were wrong about physics, we thought that everything was made up of just four elements, water, earth, wind, and fire. Do you remember? And yet, everything Euclid proved in 300 BC is as true today as it was when he wrote it, and it still will be true in hundreds of years from now. Science is dynamic, it's always being tweaked and modified, new ideas and discoveries get added as our technology improves, replacing the ideas that were less correct as the theories get more and more refined. But math, however, is growing and growing and it hardly ever gets subtracted from. Once a mathematical theorem has been proven to be true, it's always true, and never needs confirmation. So why then do mathematicians love to prove things in so many different ways? Why does a Pythagorean theorem have hundreds of different proofs, all coming to the same conclusion that a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Unlike in science, where multiple lines of evidence can make a theory stronger, multiple proofs for the Pythagorean theorem don't make it any more true. It's either true or it's false. It's binary. One proof, if it's done correctly, is enough to determine whether it's true or false and end the debate. On the other hand, one counterexample, one right angle triangle where a squared plus b squared does not equal c squared, where c is the longer side, that counterexample would be enough to disprove the theorem and end the debate. So again, why do we give multiple proofs for the same thing if one proof is enough? I think there are two reasons. Number one, it's a great exercise for students and mathematicians alike. You try to imagine that you've never seen the proof that your teacher showed you, and you try to think, how would I solve this on my own? The rearrangement proof I showed you is good for visual thinkers, but maybe you want to think of it differently, and you can learn new things by looking at things from a different perspective. What Euclid found was that the converse of the theorem was true, meaning if you have a triangle, any triangle, and label the sides a, b, and c, and you find that they happen to satisfy a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then that must be a right angle triangle that you're looking at. And I think the second reason we like to prove things in multiple ways is for fun. Once you see many different proofs and all kinds of proof techniques, you start to see the elegance and the beauty in the math. You start to say things like, this proof is so short and sweet and simple and concise. Mwah. This picture says a hundred words. It's beautiful. I know what you're thinking. Kind, nothing could compare to your beauty. And while that's true, math just has a beauty that's incomparable. You've probably heard of things like the golden ratio, which comes from the Fibonacci sequence, but appears in flowers, pineapples, nautilus shells, spiral galaxies, but I don't even have to appeal to nature. What's beautiful about math is its purity, depth, and accessibility. Dr. Ben Blum Smith once said that math is like democracy. Everyone has equal standing, no one is more privileged than anyone else, and everyone has an equal right to question authority and insist on an explanation. It's not like engineering, medicine, cooking, or architecture where experience and education can mean a great deal. You don't have to learn math from someone with credentials. All they have to do is show you the basics and you can figure the rest out by yourself by putting your own brain to use. And if it doesn't make sense to you, you can demand an explanation until you're satisfied. In other fields, you're often told to trust your teacher because the explanation is too complicated for you to comprehend. Math isn't like that at least if you have a teacher that's willing to be patient. The other thing Dr. Smith pointed out about math and democracy is that in the real world, beyond the metaphors, math is intertwined with democracy via the internet, cryptography, statistics, politics, computers, AI. Even if you disagree and you don't think math is beautiful, you don't think it's elegant, it still plays a vital role in your life whether you like it or not. Every day we're bombarded with numbers in the news, in advertisements, in media, and without the ability to interpret them properly, they can become instruments of propaganda. Math is why you pay the amount of insurance you pay, why every website wants you to use cookies, why you see the ads you see, why you see the news you see, why you can use a credit card online safely. I mean, we all have computers in our pockets that are collecting data about us all the time and none of us even know how they work. Well, maybe not none of us, it's just that many of us are ignorant, myself included. But we can know how they work, the knowledge is at our fingertips. Two answers. Number one is that it's incredibly powerful in many different applications and thus necessary for navigating this world, especially in the digital age. And answer number two is that it's fun, it's interesting, and beautiful. I personally think I would enjoy it even if there were no practical applications. Some theorems have none. The universe is so complex that at any given moment there are so many things happening at once that we're not even aware of. On a global level, a cosmic level, a subatomic level, 
Life is extremely complicated. Math is what's simple. Hi everyone, it's me, Kine. Um, If you've never seen me behind the makeup, now you have. Those of you who are longtime viewers of this channel, I know this is a really different video for me. I usually do makeup tutorials, sewing tutorials, all things drag and beauty, and it, it's been six years of making that kind of content and 300 videos later. And to be honest with you, I sort of just feel a little burnt out by that, and I want to try something different. I want to challenge myself to make more uh, fun vlogs like this and some educational content. I've always wanted to do educational videos on this channel. I've always wanted to talk about math and doing my little math TikToks really proved to me that it was something that was worth doing. If you follow my TikTok, you know I do these little math riddles and math story times and lessons over there and these videos I kind of just want to do longer form versions of that where I elaborate more, I go into more depth and I've got lots of great ideas for places we could go and cool visuals I can do. So I hope you guys stick around. I hope you guys will subscribe and stay tuned for the future videos. Um, there's so much more that I want to learn and that I want to talk about and share with you guys. But yeah, if you made it to the end of this one, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you're all doing well and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Mwah.